This is Lara Croft from Zez Studios. My name is your dad and this video was sponsored by that Zez the Studios that I mentioned in the beginning. Welcome to Ground Affected. This is a channel where every single week I produce a statue or a model or a video based upon statues and or models uh, in the 3D printing area upon the YouTubes. Now I've already prepared the base and I've also worked on uh, putting all the primer layers on the model and I have precariously hung them in very awkward spaces around my studio because I feel like this just makes you more of a modeler. If you're not testing the limits, uh, then what are you actually doing? And while these parts dry, I need to figure out how I'm gonna prepare the colors that I'm gonna paint on this model. And by prepare, what I mean is just figure out the actual order in which I'm gonna paint things because this is gonna make the entire process so much easier. Now for me, skin tones is an important part of the model and so I'm gonna focus on that first. And now that all my parts have pretty much dried and their primer layers are good to go, uh, then it's time to start painting them. For skin tones, I seem to feel like they need a little bit of white first. This helps boost uh, that contrast. And for me, one of the best whites that I've used is this white ink from Vallejo game color words are hard I'm using a 0.5 nozzle uh, needle and nozzle for this uh, airbrush my spray booth is just a general cheap crap one that I bought off of Amazon and it sucks air out but no one really knows where the air goes to so we don't worry about that part as long as it's getting caught in that thing I guess that's okay and I hold my breath when I'm painting as you can see the light is hitting that black part on the model and it's creating some highlights and shadows already for us we want to enforce this by using white and this is going to be a great base for us to build off of uh, in the future Now that I've laid down the whites, it's time for me to let that dry so that I can work on the rest of the colors uh, that are going to be around the rest of the model. And I'm going to set up all the base tones right now. And this is where I already start making mistakes. It wasn't on the boots, however, because this was the correct color to choose to paint the boots with. Uh, but I decided that this was also going to be the correct color for the pants as well. And in my deciding this, uh, I was incorrect. And so I changed the pants from that reddish brown to this slightly more different brown. Now that I have the base coats on most of the parts, uh, realistically, I probably can dry brush these, but I'm working with the airbrush. Actually, I just realized there's this little thing. Let's get a brown on him too. The next step is going to be putting on a shade onto those browns. Annoyingly, I'm out of this one. Let me go and get one from my shop. I choose you. Okay, this is a Rocklin flesh shade, and this is going to be really great for tinting the color of this particular brown red. I'm going to use Agrax on that one. Hey, let's just quickly add those in because I need to mask off the little bits of skin that I left over before I even start on all the skin tones. So that's what I gotta do right now. As I said, this is the time I'm gonna add the shadows to the parts that I had pretty much given their first layer of colors. And I'm gonna do this very carefully using my airbrush on a lower kind of pressure and I'm gonna spray this into the shadows and pretty much just pray to the painting gods that this will work, but it always works. While I had Sagor Brown in my airbrush, I decided to use this time to paint the hair as well. Before I mask off the little pair of pants, I'm gonna give it this matte varnish. You can use any matte varnish, and uh, that will probably help to protect your layers. And while I wait for that varnish to dry, it's a good time to work on some other parts on the model. So I'm gonna take the time to dry brush a little bit of silver over the gats on her hips. Of course, this is going to need a little bit of extra help, and that help is gonna come in the form of a panel line wash over the top of the silver once it has dried.
And now that the pants have dried enough, I can use some masking tape to mask off the areas uh, that I don't want to get skin tone on because I have spent the time to paint the pant color. I don't want skin tone color all over the pant color. And in order to set that up, I'm obviously going to spray it with the same white ink that I sprayed on the rest of the skin parts uh, before this. Now it's time to add what I like to call uh, the color pinkle. This is essentially pink or purple we're not really sure uh, but some might say it's just magenta and the reality is it probably is just magenta uh, but pinkle sounds so much cooler you're gonna want to spray this pretty much over everything that you already sprayed the white on and whatever black is left over after that you want to spray a red ink onto that this is going to create uh, the undertones for the skin tones uh, that we're going to lay on top of this later and i want you to pay attention to how simple this is if you paint these layers in exactly this way that i said you spray from the top one color and the bottom another color you can literally take one color of skin tone uh, just any sort of medium skin tone that you find in your color collection and add a fair amount of water to this in order to make it see-through. You can then spray that over the top of the pinkle layers and you have magic skin. You don't even have to try. Even if you don't spray in the correct direction, it will still look like magic skin. Trust me, just try it and uh, when it works for you, come back and leave a comment on this video uh, about how much you hated me or loved me. Whatever it is, I don't really care. But painting skin does not have to be difficult. And if you want your skin tones to look uh, at least cool enough, you can follow this method and have a really great looking skin tone. If you really want to boost that even more, I like to take a slightly lighter skin tone after that and paint it again very thinly. I've mixed water into this to make it thin so that it layers over very nicely. And then after that, I will probably add a slightly whitish color. In this case, it's called Highlight Skin. I really like this color. It's just super smooth from this particular paint set. And I will very specifically pinpoint that onto the tips of the shoulders, the elbows, the back of the neck, and on other areas that the highlights should naturally fall on. If you want to elevate that skin tone even further, you can take something like Orcish Dermis and thin this down at least 50-50 and spray this into the bendy areas of the model. The other thing you can also use is Raclin Flesh Shade. I like Orcish Dermis because it adds the pink back in because sometimes we can get a bit overboard with the skin tones. But Raclin Flesh Shade through the airbrush neat into the shadowed areas will help tint the skin. I'm going to probably need to do some more masking so in order to protect those layers, I'm going to put another layer of a matte varnish. And while that dries, I will be able to spend the time taking off the mask that I'd put on the pants to paint the skin. So now that I have everything pretty much uh, prepared with the airbrush, it's time to get to the table and bring out my wet palette, put some paints onto it, and start painting some of the smaller details. Now I'll try not to bore you with some of the repetitive actions that are needed in order to paint these kind of models uh, but basically what I'm going to do now is take some black and paint over all the areas uh, that need to be black, obviously. Uh, the black that I prefer to use is the model color Vallejo Black. This is one of the easiest paints to use. And then I'm going to take some Sargo Brown and paint that little bit of hair that I didn't get to paint with the airbrush because obviously the overspray of dark brown would not be good on top of her face. I'm also going to use that same Sargo Brown to paint the belt that goes around her waist. This is going to help separate the colors and make it look like I put more effort in than I actually did. The next step is to go on all of the little buckles and metal pieces on her pants and paint them all metal. One of the things about this is that it is going to be messy. And the trick with this is to make sure that you have the original color, for example, black, like I painted on the straps at first, at hand, because you can come back and clean up any areas that you made a mess. Just don't make a mess on the airbrush area, uh, because you're going to have to go back to the beginning, and that will suck. Once everything is painted in the way that I need them to be painted, I can put things onto the model like the pouch and the two gats against her side. I didn't glue these because they fit with a very good press fit. And the legs, I gave a tiny magnet to the top of them so that they can stick into the hips a lot easier. 
the next part for this model was going to be setting up the color for a shirt and the particular color that i chose for this one as you can clearly tell did not work very well in one layer i needed three layers to make sure that this was the color that i wanted it is day two of the build and i wanted to show you how far i've gotten so far so as we can see it's starting to take a little bit of shape and uh, the model is looking like a model now i also want to take this opportunity to talk to you about this week's sponsor and that is zez studios if you subscribe to their tier 2 silver member at 25 dollars a month you will get the full welcome pack which is three busts three full statues as well as three poster arts zez studios prides themselves in high quality sculpts and uh, it's pretty evident in the models that I make that are sponsored by them anyway. So if you like any of these models and you want to make some of these, then go check out the link in my description and get yourself uh, attached to the Zez Studios Patreon right now. So in order to look like a cool YouTuber who does cool B-roll shots and all that stuff, uh, I had to build the model. And that means annoyingly, I now have to unbuild the model, which is kind of annoying and uh, there's not really much I can do about it. I'm going to be totally honest. So if you've watched any of my videos, normally I would do the bases first and there's a very specific reason for this and I'm going to pretty much demonstrate this right now. I'm essentially done with her legs and her butt and I would be done with these uh, shoes in probably the next half an hour to an hour. Uh, but annoyingly, I have nowhere to put these things if I complete them. So basically, I need to work on this base, uh, which is what I'm trying to say. I think what I'm going to do is maybe add a little bit of a highlight to this and paint her strap and then her arm and then I'm going to start working on the base because I'm going to need somewhere to start putting things and I'm going to need to start putting them somewhere today. So in order to complete the shirt, I'm going to take some Drakenhof Nightshade after I've obviously masked off the skin areas and I'm going to spray that into the shadows. I'm then going to take some of this really bright blue that looks like some kind of a icy blue and spray this into the highlight areas. This is just going to create some contrast between the darks and the lights. Once that's dry, I can take off the masking tape and come back and paint the straps that go around her chest and across her back. And while I'm waiting for stuff to draw, I can kill some two birds with more than one stone and paint the buckle using this brass color from Monument Hobbies. I'm now also going to be doing that bird stoning thing and painting the bow as well. I'm going to take a white and I'm going to spray that just over everything. As you can see, I masked off the skin tones that I'd painted on her fingers, and once I'd got the white to where I wanted it, uh, being a highlight, I'm then going to spray Skeleton Horde over the top of all of that and put it aside to dry so I can work on the base so that I finally have somewhere to put the freaking model. The base is quite simple, really. It's a lot of uh, stuff that is going to be in a foresty kind of vibe, so. It doesn't matter if you're messy here. What I'm going to do is try and get the colors in the places that they need to be, i.e. the stone in the stony areas and the brown in the brownie areas. I was not quite happy with the color that I had chosen for the tree trunk, so I decided to use a slightly richer, more redder brown. I also placed the birds on at this time because I want to make sure that all the dry brushing and work that I do on the base goes over the little piece of the base that is attached to the birds. Of course, this is attached because the birds have very very skinny legs remember that because at some point we're going to come back to those legs in the near future I also took a brighter orangey brown and I went over kind of like the highlight areas just to make sure that there was some separation and it wasn't all just one color now I can take some washes and I can spray them in their respective areas I'm going to use brown over the brown parts obviously and I'm going to use a bluish kind of color over the brick and stone kind of areas this is going to help reinforce the colors as well as add some more saturation into the entire piece itself. For the ropes, that's pretty simple. You just need a dry brush, a deck tan, or something similar, which is a white kind of color, over the all of the ropes, and then paint uh, that skeleton horde straight over the top of it, and it magically just makes it look like ropes. I then took a bit of deck tan and highlighted some of the edges uh, across the bricks and the stony area. 
Now, a very important thing if you want to make textures is to keep some of the packaging that you make yet in some of the stuff that you have shipped to your house uh, frequently. So if you are getting any of these spongy kind of things, you want to keep them and uh, just put them in a drawer somewhere uh, and let your wife shout at you when she finds them and then just replace them in a different drawer because they are amazing for creating textures specifically uh, on bases and things like this uh, where you need to create textures that looks like a mossy kind of effect uh, these are amazing for that uh, also I just want to mention that that green that I had originally painted that you saw me painting which was an emerald green was incredibly the wrong color for what I was doing so try not to make this mistake and uh, try to stick within the tonal range. Now, of course, that might be quite co complicated uh, if you don't really understanding what color theory is, uh, but essentially I went too blue with that green and it was looking a little bit weird. Also, another thing for texturing stuff, you can also use a brush that is a little bit damaged. This is what I'm using on this kind of grassy area in the middle there. It does help uh, to have a damaged brush to do this with, but if you don't, the sponge is also good enough. As you can tell, I airbrushed some of that bright green over the top of the other green areas to try and get some uh, of that airbrush smoothness added to the base section. And I also took some darker greens and sprayed that in certain areas as well. This is mainly just to help create depth and make it look a little bit more uh, like it has some colors and effort put into it. Now I'm going to start working on her boots because, of course, I've made a place for her to stand, uh, but she can't stand because I never painted her boots. Do you see how this is a conundrum? And it's important to actually have a plan when you start out making a model. Speaking of plan, this was completely off plan, and I decided to dry brush all of the hair again because I had some of that deck tan out. I thought this was going to make the hair a little bit more detailed, uh, but unfortunately, when I painted the brown back over the top, it made absolutely no difference. And the hair went back to just being dark brown. So that's a pretty cool thing if you learn from my mistakes. You may not want to do it this way and just wait till the end when I actually dry brushed a slightly lighter brown over the top of it. I did, however, manage to keep it together enough to actually dry brush brown over the quiver. Now getting on to the things that's going to hold her up when I place her on top of her base is those boots. And the easiest thing about the boots is just painting the laces a dark brown color. And also there is some metallic things which is kind of difficult, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I just painted those silver and uh, there were some buckles that also need to be silver as well. The annoying thing is I was not happy with the actual color of the socks and I felt like they needed to be a little bit darker so I used Skeleton Horde again to spray from the shadows over the socks. I also used some Agrax Earthshade to paint the straps of her boots as well just to slightly change the color of them. And now that I have a place to put my model, I need to start working on some of the other details on this model. And the next step for me is going to be painting the reddish leather that is on the quiver. I'm also going to use some deck tan, thin down quite a bit to paint over that top section, which I'm going to come back and spray and change a little bit later. But before I do that, I'm going to take some more of that deck tan without the thinning down part. And I'm going to draw brush that over the stitches as well as the rope around the quiver. I'm also going to do that on the little heads of the arrows themselves as well because we'll come back and sort this out later. That dry brushing made a massive mess so I need to go back with the red and repaint to tidy up the edges around the ropes where I dry brushed uh, to make the ropes look a little bit uh, better. Now for those uh, awesome back ends of the arrows I'm going to use a little bit of Talisar Blue and I'm going to thin this kind of 50-50 and spray it very thinly over that dry brushing that I pre previously did. Taking some Gilliman flesh, I will paint that over the little fluffy bit at the top of the quiver. I'm going to do probably two or three layers of this to make sure it is nice and dark. Now again, using Skeleton Horde, I'm going to paint the ropes that I had previously dry brushed. Like I said, this is just a really easy way of making oldish, dirty looking ropes uh, for free. You don't even have to try hard. Taking some silver, I then tapped that across the top of the arrows because they have, it looks like some sort of a silver tip, I think. I dry brushed a little bit of a reddish brown over the straps on her chest and I also painted silver over the buckles and the little metal pieces across those straps as well. Now you may be wondering, why did I glue her arm on in the first place when I am now about to struggle to paint it? 
because I need to paint the glove on her hand and I will tell you the answer is because the fit of this particular part was not as good as I would have liked it to be so what I ended up doing was filling the gaps and sticking the arm in because this was the easiest way to do it at least in my opinion and yes I did have to struggle to get that glove painted but luckily it wasn't hidden too much and it was easy enough to get to. I used a brighter skin tone to paint over her nails and I used that white that I used to highlight the skin with to also give it like a French manicure look. And then I stuck that quiver to her back with just friction because it fits really well so I didn't have to put anything else in. I then painted those sticks that is attached to the arrows to make sure that they were the exact same color for the two that are matching from the one in her hand to the one in the quiver and I very carefully and easily painted the ponytail on the back of her head. Now to move back onto the rest of the accessories, which is actually a hand, so it's technically not an accessory and rather more important than that, I'm going to take dry brushing uh, all over this with Dectan. Again, it's just what I'm going to do because there is ropes and I need those ropes to look kind of like ropes. Uh, before I put that skeleton hoard over though, I'm going to make sure that I paint her hand first because it's going to be a little bit easier if I make any mistakes to go back now and fix it than if I did it later. And as you can see, that skeleton horde just does such an amazing job of making things look old and ropey. Uh, it's also actually just really good for so many things. If you don't have this color, you probably want to put it into your collection of colors. Now working on her face, I'm going to use the same technique that I use pretty much for all the faces that I paint. And I'm going to paint black over her eyelashes. Uh, this is setting up the eyes and making sure that they uh, have some form of an eyeliner. I'm also going to take some Sigor Brown and very carefully do a bunch of tiny little lines to make up the eyebrows for this particular model. This model doesn't actually have eyebrows sculpted on, uh, but it was easy enough to just paint them in place. I also like to take a little bit of Griff Charger Grey and spray that into the sockets of the eyes to make it look kind of like there is makeup on the model. And then I take a little bit of Magos Purple to paint the lips. For her little necklace, I used silver at first, and then I used that greenish color, uh, which is Rex Flame, Rex Haith Flame, whatever it is from Citadel, and I painted that thing silver because it's meant to be silver. And now painting her eyes, I started with a little bit of a pink first because I want to set up that pinkish look to the eyes, and then I'm going to use some highlight skin to paint the sclera, which is the fancy word for the whites of the eyes, and I'm going to now be able to glue the hair onto her head so that I can actually work on that hair pretty much together as opposed to in singular pieces. And this is the part where I just used a brown to dry brush instead of trying to do fancy tricks like I did before. I also severely dislike the look of dry brushing so if I do dry brush something I usually tend to come back with a wash later on to just separate some of the shadowed areas and some other areas so that they just don't look all dry and brushy. Uh, like it was dry brushed. Now moving on to the animals that are on this base. I'm gonna say this with all of my heart. I absolutely dislike painting, drawing, or even anything that comes to do with uh, making animals as a form of art because they are so difficult. Either you are an animal painting person or you're not. And I'm just not an animal painting person. So I'll do my best to explain how to make these animals look even slightly somewhat like the animals they're meant to look like. So for this toucan, what I did was painted deck tan over all the parts that needed to have orange as well as the white areas on his chest. I then took a little bit of uh, orange and painted that over his beak and also over the uh, section of his eyes and then I used black to come back in and wrap the little thing that goes around the beak and the thing on the top of the front of the beak which is a black area and then painted the little crest on his back end of story Bob is your uncle actually you might want to dry brush them with a little bit of I don't know gray maybe I, I honestly don't know painting animals is not easy I really am not good at painting animals and I kind of just breeze through this part as quickly as I possibly could because it is very difficult and I'm not very good at it so painting the monkey the only thing I can say is it I just put deck tan down I sprayed a little bit of uh, rope color and uh, painted his face with human skin color in some form and then sprayed a little bit of washes at it so I managed to drop the stupid toucan uh, and his leg snapped after I glued everything together 
uh, you can't really tell where I glued it, but unfortunately his leg snapped. I took a piece of soldering wire and I cut that into a very tiny little piece and held it with a very small tweezer into the place and glued it in there. And now he has a new leg. And with that crisis averted, I can now paint the bird uh, in a place where you don't have to watch me because it's embarrassing how bad I am at painting animals. Uh, but what I'm not too bad at is painting eyes. And one thing you can notice from this particular footage of me painting eyes is how I set them up. What you can see, if you can see it, is that I painted originally the first eye slightly bigger than the other one. I'm talking about the irises here. And you can see me kind of building them up as I go along. I go a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, until it is the right size. It is better to go small and build it big than to go too big and have to start again. I use a lighter brown on the inside of that dark brown to create a little bit more color. And then I add a bit of a pupil, which is black, and a tiny bit of a spot of a specular white highlight, put the head on the model, and I call it done. As with all of my videos, I hope that you pick something out of this video that might help you. Maybe it, it helps you with your next model making uh, escapades. And if it does, uh, I'm very grateful that I can help you. Also, if it was not helpful at all and it was just entertaining while you're on the toilet, make sure to wash your hands uh, because that is freaking gross. Anyway, I want you to check out the description because there are sponsor of this video that you should check out. Also, there are links to other things, for example, like my Patreon. If you wanted to know that this video was even coming out in the first place, you would have known before everyone else if you were one of my patrons. You would have also had work in progress pictures as well as uh, the full color palette laid out onto a tray for you to see all the colors in one place and you can make your shopping list from there. I don't try to sell you anything it's up to you whether you need some of that stuff so uh maybe you want to check out my patreon for a little bit more extra ground affected in your life now it is a very important time of the video this is where i tell you you have to share this video with your gran otherwise your breath will stink and uh if you don't like it i don't really care and you can kindly f off